Welcome to the Bottom Light Church. Thank you for taking time to listen to this message, and I pray that you will be able to get a lot out of it. Dear Father, help us to get a lot out of your word, Father God. Thank you, Father, this isn't about me, but it's about you, Father God. Anoint our ears to hear, in Jesus' name, amen. This is titled, My Vision and God's Vision. Proverbs 29, 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Some people have misused this verse and think, I need to have more possessions. I need to be the one in charge. But they miss the point about having the vision of happiness and joy in the Lord. Instead, their vision is to be in the calling that they see themselves in and not enjoying the giftings that God has for them. God has given us a calling to have the joy of the Lord in our lives. And peace. That's the vision. That's such an awesome vision God has for us. I have seen people that are great at giving words from the Lord, but their vision was to teach. So they went on their own vision instead of God's vision for their life. It did not end up good for them or their church family. I'm not saying that God does not put different callings in your life that need to be developed but we must make sure we're doing God's will and not our own. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he'll make straight your path. Trusting the Lord is very important. Because he has a special vision for your life and a calling for your life. The most important calling in your life is to obey God and be his friend. That is the kind of vision he has for you. Remember the part in Proverbs 29, 18 about obeying the law? We need to make sure we're obedient. A lot of people want God to obey them, but he's the king of kings, not the media, and especially not us. He wants to be the friend in your life that you are running to. If you are watching like five hours of news, it's time to remove that friend. Because he wants to be your friend. Your best friend. Not just your friend. Your best friend. James 4.8 Come close to God and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. We all fall into this at times, where our loyalty is displeasing to God. But that is why it says, come close to God, and he will set you free. Because that is the vision. He wants to see us free. God has set me free from lots of things that were not pleasing to him. If you have hatred toward yourself, God wants to set you free from that. Because he created you, he loves what he creates. I remember when I was praying about my wife to come, God told me to start thanking him that I'm a great catch for my future wife. I did not think, feel like thanking him for that, but the more I did, the more I became free. See, his vision is to see me free, and his vision is to see us all set free. John 8, 36. So if the sun sets you free, you'll be free indeed. Maybe you struggle with watching bad movies that you want God to set you free of. Whatever it is, God will set you free if you go to him with your whole heart. Or maybe it's being critical. Or maybe it's complaining too much. God wants us to be set free. Maybe you are full of fear. A lot of people are afraid of this virus. But remember, Jesus even laid hands on the leopards and they were healed. John 15, 15. I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. But now you are my friends since I have told you everything the Father told me. When you receive him as your friend, he will show you stuff to pray for. Like in prayer meetings, God has showed us so many wonderful things to pray about. A lot of them is to remain faithful to God. And a lot of them are, he's proud of us for taking time to, to pray. God loves talking to us. John 15, 5. 
I am the vine, you are the branches. If you re remain in me, I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you stay faithful to our best friend, we have lots and lots of fruit. God wants to, us to be free. He wants to give us lots of laughing times. You know, more you laugh, more you'll be free. John 15, 2. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Well, every branch that does not bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. We all have branches at times that hold us down. God wants to cut it off of us. Like if we have a bad branch of discouragement, God wants to set us free from that bad branch. If we put something on Facebook that's not pleasing to God, it might have just one bad word in it. God wants to cut off that bad branch in us. Or maybe the snake was on this branch saying, You have done a lot for the kingdom of God. God sees all that you have done. So you can take it easy. You don't have to do so much. You know what? That person over there can do more because God sees how much you have done. See, that sounds good, but that does not line up with the word of God. Hebrews 12.1 Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin so easily trips us up by, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. I remember Paul Tucker was thinking of taking it easy, but when he talked to God, he says, no, you need to finish strong. And he was someone that went all over the world preaching the word of God. But God said, no, I'm not done with you yet. I want you to finish strong. Still more people need to be set free. And God used them till he died earlier this year. Philippians 4.13 I can do all things through him who gives me strength. As our best friend, he wants to give us strength to get the victory. Romans 15.13 May the God of hope fill you with joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is our best friend and wants us to have the joy and the peace of the Lord. I remember one time things were very difficult, so I asked God to give us something to laugh about. And he blessed me with something to laugh about. Because he did that, because he loves me, because he's my best friend. God came to Moses in the burning bush as a friend and said he wants to use him to set the Israelites free. Moses, as a friend of God, said, I'm not good at talking. So God was like, I'll give you your brother to help you speak. If you want to read more about that, it's in Exodus chapter 3. God has come to many, many times with great ideas to bless me. When me and Sarah were just friends, I was worshiping God one night and he came into the room and says, Ben, take Sarah as your wife. And I'm like, what, God? And then God says, stop being around the bush. Take her as your wife. See, as a friend, God was telling me that. And I'm so happy I obeyed him. Okay, Solomon asked God for wisdom. 1 Kings 3, 9. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? If you keep on reading, it says how God was pleased with his servant. And he blessed him with even more than he asked for. God loves to bless his children, and a special blessing for each one of us. But we must bless him by making him our best friend. If you're wondering how to develop a better friendship with God, here are some ideas. It is simple. Put worship music on in your house and let it play over and over. Or put the Bible on CD and let it go over and over. One of my friends, she went through a divorce and through divorce recovery, they taught her, you know what? Why don't you listen to only Christian music for one month and see if they'll change your attitude? So she reluctantly said, okay, I'll give it a try. She listened to only Christian music for one month and it changed her whole attitude. 
Too bad she went to know on this when she's married. It might have saved her marriage. But it's better to learn late than never, I guess. Another one of my friends, we were talking to her how basically she needs to, you know, stay away from that secular music and focus on worshiping God and listen to his music. She didn't really listen to us until one day she was in the car. She put her secular music, grabbed her secular music CD, put it in the CD player. Boom, the power of God came in the car, took that CD out and put her Christian one in there. She came and told us all how God set her free from secular music. See, we just prayed about it because she didn't receive from us. But over time, she got set free. See, God's vision for our lives is us to worship him. Isaiah 43, 21. Just need some more water here. A lot of talking for me. This people I have formed for myself that they may proclaim my praise. The King of Kings formed us to worship Him, so our vision for our lives should be to worship Him and declare praise to Him. God is looking for us to praise Him and be thankful for all the blessings He has blessed us with. Like this year, I have had a lot of blessings from, from the Lord. If we look at the stuff going on, you can get discouraged, but you must choose to praise the Lord and let the Lord humble our enemies. Abeka 2.4 See, the enemy is puffed up. His desires are not upright, but the righteous person will live by his faithfulness. The enemy gets all puffed up when we get discouraged or when you start to complain about your brothers and sisters in the Lord. We need to be faithful to God how we see our brothers and sisters in the Lord. God's vision is to see his children getting along so they can follow God's vision. The devil has a vision as well, which is complaining and put each other down. Romans 12, 18. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Now, how do you react when someone authority corrects you? Do you choose peace? There is a story. This one person was being in the flesh. The leader had enough of that. And he yelled at him and said, get behind me, Satan. But the person that was being yelled at chose to live at peace with this leader. That story is actually found in the Bible. Matthew 16, 23, Jesus told Peter to get behind me, Satan. There's going to be lots of times at church where the message may be a little harsh, but it is for our benefit to grow in the people that God has called us to be. Do we submit to the leaders or do we complain? Like when God gives the pastor a message, do we follow what God has put on his heart? Or like when the worship leader, um, God tells him, the worship leader, okay, I want everybody to raise their hands and surrender to God. Do you submit to what the word of God says? When God tells you to clap, when the worship leader, God puts on the worship leader to clap for the victory, do you clap? I've seen it where God has told people to dance for their victory, and they didn't dance, and they never got their victory because they didn't obey the word of the Lord. We must always remember to submit to God. Well, that's the end of this message, so let me just pray with all of you. Dear Father, thank you, Father, for this day, and dear Father, help so this word of God will penetrate your lives. In Jesus' name, amen.